Now, uh, as you know, this is the, our first session of the online workshop, and I am very happy to introduce Debbie Douglas, the Executive Director of the Ontario Council for Agency Serving Immigrants, OCASI. Thank you, Adel. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It's so great to look out on my screen. I wish we were in person to look out at my screen and see so many of, of you here today. Um, I wanted just to take a few minutes to chat with you about OCASI. Um, the, many of you are new um, to the council and its work, um, and I'm so glad that we have found um, each other. Uh, OCASI, um, as you may have read, uh, is the provincial umbrella organization for agencies that provide services to um, newcomers to Canada, immigrants, refugees, uh, refugee claimants, uh, international students, migrant workers. Um, we have a dual mandate um, as a council um, to build capacity of our member agencies and the sector more broadly, including um, working with communities that are often um, disadvantaged or um, who are often marginalized uh, to ensure that they're able to participate um, in influencing uh, government policy, but also um, in being able to have access to the resources that we advocate um, so, 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 so hard for. Um, the pro the, we are actually celebrating our 45th year um, this year. So it's our 45th anniversary year. We were founded in 1978 by a small group of community-based organizations who were determined um, to ensure that immigrants uh, and refugees to Canada um, were met with a welcoming um, society. And that means then for the council paying attention to issues of anti-racism um, and other forms of discrimination. We are very serious about how it is that we work within an anti-racist, anti-oppression framework, recognizing the various intersectionalities of uh, the people we work with and for, as well as um, our, the clients that many of our organizations serve in their, in their communities. Um, for many, many years, OCASI has paid attention, as I said, to communities that have been historically disadvantaged, and that necessarily includes um, the Black African descent um, community and other racialized uh, communities here in Ontario and across um, the country. Uh, we went to bat in the 2010-2011 um, years when the federal government under the previous um, government uh, defunded um, a number of organizations here in Ontario and cut our, the settlement uh, funding by almost $200 million. Many of the organizations who were defunded at that time were Black and racialized organizations. And since that time, Ocasi has made it um, a priority to work with all various levels of government to ensure that racialized organizations, whether or not we're talking about Latinx communities or various African communities, Asian um, communities, um, and others um, are able to support the communities and to be resource to 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 to, to um, advance the priorities of the of the groups that with which they work. So the launching of this isn't um, a surprise. Um, we've been working with the federal government to ensure to look at take a look at who it funds um, and who it hasn't funded historically. Um, we are requesting, um, as part of our advocacy work, that the federal government do a third-party anti-racism review of all of its various functions, from selection to settlement. Um, and this work that we're doing here is part of the work that we do in terms of settlement um, and, and, and integration. And so we will continue to support small organizations like you and to continue to advocate to ensure that you're able to access the resources that are made available to settle immigrants and refugees. So this um, small black, black led and racialized organizations project, as I said, funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada and the United Way of Greater Toronto, um, for us is to promote uh, equity for small black led and racialized organizations by supporting you to build your capacity to successfully navigate government funding processes to effectively um, propose projects, to negotiate contribution agreements, which can be a nightmare um, in, in itself, um, to secure and manage a report on IRCC, but also other levels of government funding um, and other federal department um, funding. 
as well as well as um, to develop to begin to develop relationships um, with government funders and others um, who control um, what what gets done um, in 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 this sector and and in this space. Um, our online se workshop series is one of the main activities of this initiative, um, and it covers the areas that we heard from you are of priorities that you've identified as your highest capacity building needs through the training assess ass needs assessment that we conducted a few months ago. Um, that report, if you're interested, is accessible on the OCASI website at www.ocasi.org. Um, we today, as you know, is our first workshop on proposal writing, um, and that will be followed by community-based programming, financial management, HR and volunteer management, governance 101, and Afrocentric um, governance. We are so thrilled in terms of the facilitators we've been able to engage um, for this initiative. Um, they bring a wealth of experience. Um, they bring sound analysis in terms of anti-racism and anti-oppression. They have um, experience in organizational development um, and, um, and, and are um, open um, and, and accessible in terms of being able to work with organizations at all levels. Um, we're all on different paths on this journey of developing um, community infrastructure that works to support our communities. So I will stop there. My apologies to um, our interpreters. I know I often speak too quickly. Um, and now back to you, Otto. Enjoy this work first workshop. I'm looking forward to the rest as well and to today. Thank you. Now I would like to briefly introduce our trainers for today's proposal writing workshop, Game Consulting. Game Consulting is a leading business consulting firm known for its extensive experience in community development and business enhancement strategies. With a diverse team of experts, Game Consulting provides comprehensive solutions focusing on equity, diversity, and inclusion to empower businesses, nonprofits, and professionals towards growth and excellence. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much, Debbie, for uh, setting that context, and uh, Adelpha and Etta for inviting us here today. Uh, we're delighted to have you here as we kick off this six-week webinar series, Organized by Ocasi's Capacity Building and Training for Small Black-Led and Racialized Leading Organizations initi Initiative. Today marks the beginning of an exciting journey, um, starting with proposal writing, and we're thrilled to have you all as a part of this learning experience. So whether you're new to proposal writing or an experienced grant writer, you're in the right place. Um, today, we're going to focus on the Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada proposal. But the information that we provide today will be useful for most grant applications. Um, so in this webinar, we'll discuss the, the key components of successful grant proposals and give practical advice on how to make your application stand out, because we believe that everyone here has the potential to create those impactful proposals, so we're excited to guide you throughout this process. We're also excited to announce that we'll be back for the second part of this webinar series, which will be a Q&A session on November the 16th at 12 p uh, to 1 p.m. Um, this will also be a great opportunity opportunity for the information that you learned today to also um, ask questions and deepen your understanding of proposal writing. So let's get started. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, perfect. So before we begin, let me introduce the team. So my name is Keisha Evans, and I'm the Principal Consultant of CAMI Consulting. I'm here with Lisa Medhin, who is the Lead Grant Writer, and Simona Simpson, who is the Training and Leadership Consultant for the CAMI Consulting team. Next slide, please. So at CAMI Consulting, thanks so much, uh, Adele, for providing some context. We offer customized support to grassroots organizations, nonprofits, and community-based groups. Our specialty really is in uh, governance development and support, program development, strategic planning, grant and business plan writing, and project management. Uh, we also offer executive and business coaching, as well as provide customized workshops and webinars for organizations. Next slide, please. 
Perfect. All right. Thanks, Keisha. I'm also so really excited to be on this webinar with all of you today. Um, so during the presentation, we'll cover a variety of content and give you the basic of grant writing. This is particularly as it pertains to immigration, refugees, Citizenship Canada Settlement and the Resettlement Assistant Program. Um, we'll be discussing the purpose of the program and how to create an account with the grant and contribution systems. We will also provide an overview on different sections of the proposal, address the principles of an application and how to effectively and efficiently write the winning proposal. We'll also highlight some best practices on the proposal writing strategy and the documentation that's required to be submitted. Now, this webinar is not just one-sided. We would love to get your input along the way. So throughout the webinar, um, we were, I'm going to do some touch points and poll questions and activities to gather your feedback and also to keep you engaged. Now, with that said, I'm going to jump right into it with your first poll question. Next slide. This poll gives me a starting point to get a better understanding about your experiences and insights and where you are in your grant journey writing. Uh, sorry, write, grant writing journey. Um, I'll give you about 30 seconds uh, to answer the questions, okay? So first question, have you ever written a grant proposal before? Your options are A, yes, I've written multiple successful grant proposals. B, yes, but I haven't been successful yet or C, no, this is my first time exploring grant writing. All right. It looks like the majority is answering C, no, this is the first time exploring grant writing. Well, that's great. Welcome. You came to the right place. Hopefully we can get you started on the right path with your uh, grant writing journey. All right. Question two, what are the aspects of grant or proposal writing you find ch most challenging? Okay, your options are A, finding a suitable grant opportunities, B, crafting a compelling narrative, C, budgeting and financial planning, D, ensuring the proposed project's impact and feasibility, or E, other. Now, if you are able, please put your answer in Slido or the chat. Again, you have about 30 seconds to answer the questions. Okay. All right, so it looks like you guys worked ahead. That was that was fast. It looks like all everyone picked, well, most people picked A, finding a suitable grant opportunities. So hopefully by the end of the webinar, with all the wonderful information you'll receive, you'll feel more comfortable with the opportunities. And the last question, so I see here, you just scroll down to the bottom. The last question is, what is your primary goal for attending this webinar? So your options are A, to learn the fundamentals of grant writing, B, to improve my grant writing, my grant proposal writing skills. C, to identify new grant opportunities. D, to network with other grant writers or E, other. That is awesome. It looks like the majority chose A, to learn the fundamentals of grant writing. Yay for you. I'm a huge advocate on continued learning. So it looks like you guys are in the right place at the right time. Next slide, please. Thanks, Simona. That was a great poll and thanks to the participants. I want to talk a little about the purpose of the IRCC call for proposal. Through the IRCC fund, the government of Canada has a commitment to assist immigrants and refugees with their settlement and integration journey. The IRCC has a vision for their 2024 call for proposal that is to foster a program that delivers the right service to the right clients at the right time. This includes ensuring that services are closely aligned to client strengths and needs, Strengthening, strengthening their commitment to ensure that diverse populations can access and benefit from settlement services, and improving access to high quality and consistent services, regardless of where the client is in their immigration journey. We deeply appreciate the government's dedication to their vision, and we are grateful for the opportunity to support others who share the same goal of helping immigrants, migrants, and refugees adapt to life in Canada. Throughout history, systemic racism has had a profound impact on the ability of organizations serving Black, Indigenous, and people of color to access certain funding. Debbie Douglas mentioned that earlier. Um, and also to provide meaningful programming. This legacy of discrimination and inequality continues to influence the landscape of grant funding and community support. However, Canada has come a long way in addressing past struggles with racism and structural barriers in immigration. 
recent opinion polls have shown overwhelming support for immigration and diversity in Canada. According to the 2021 Settlement Outcomes Highlights Report, a staggering 84% of Canadians who were polled agree that immigration positively impacts our economy. The physical, social, emotional, and financial journey for immigrants, migrants, and refugees is most often filled with challenges, uncertainties, and shocking surprises. They are most likely to encounter long-lasting housing and food insecurities, employment, language and educational barriers, and racism embedded within the systems that they may seek support from. This underscores the culturally specific support services and the importance to ensure that programs and assistance are both appropriate and relevant. The IRCC's call for proposal is designed to rally support from individuals and organizations like all of you to establish a comprehensive array of settlement and resettlement assistant program services across Canada. The funding available will empower you to propose innovative and impactful services tailored to address specific gaps or current needs within your community or region. As early as mid-November or within a couple of weeks, the IRCC will launch its call for proposal for 2024. For this round, they will be introducing three new funding streams to ensure capacity to support specialized priorities and needs. The first one is called Francophone Integration Pathway, or FIP. This funding is for a suite of settlement services in French, that includes all the direct and indirect service components of the Settlement and Resettlement Assistance Program. The second is the equity stream. This fund is for intermediary organizations and in order for them to redistribute funds and support not currently funded grassroots organizations that serve and are representative of the equity deserving groups. This is in order to build their capacity to effectively deliver settlement services. And the third stream is related to service development improvement or SDI. This offers funding to five year large scale pilot projects that will test promising practices or concepts identified by previous SDI expression of interest processes. You will be able to learn more about these funding streams when the call for proposal is finally launched. Today's presentation will help you to navigate the call for proposal application process. As well, you will gain a better general understanding of the proposal writing process and increase your capacity to apply for future funding. Next slide. Thanks, Lisa, for sharing this information. It's very important. So before you start your grant application, the application for your grant, sorry, you will need to register. Uh, here's a short video walking you through that process. To start your application, you must first log into GCS Partner Portal. Once you have successfully logged in, you will be brought to the home page. Note, if you are stagnant for 60 minutes on this partner site, you will be logged out. So remember to save your work to avoid loss. The home page has a list of hyperlinks that will help you navigate to different parts of the system. You can click the, on the hyperlink to open up the part of the system that is displayed. Click on View or Submit Applications hyperlink to open the application section. This page displays a list of applications you have started or submitted. You can start a new application by clicking the New button once you select New, you will be brought to the funding page. Every application in the GCS Partner Portal is submitted under a particular funding process. Your proposal should correspond with the interest of your funding process you select. Use the Select Funding Process dropdown to indicate once you've filled out the necessary information. Click the Start Your Application button to start your application. The status page display on an outline of the application information 
that must be completed before you can submit. The status page allows you to add an individual from your organization. Also, you can use the page to receive updates of your application. Click the Get Started button to start your application. Here's an example of an almost completed status page. The executive director or appointed delegated administrator is responsible for completing the executive declaration and submitting the application to the department. When preparing to submit the application, review any documents and information that you could have included in the application and verify that your application is truthful, complete, and correct. Make any necessary adjustments to the application before you submit it, as you will not be able to edit it after you submit. Ensure that you understand the notice regarding personal information and read each certification carefully. If you are not the executive director and do not have permission to submit, click the submit declaration and an executive director will be prompted to log into GCS. After you have successfully submitted your application, you will receive an acknowledgement of the submission. If you would like to download a copy of your application, navigate back to the status page of your application. Okay, hopefully that video provided some clarity on the registration process. So what I'm going to focus on now is the guiding principles of the IRCC proposal. So the guiding principles play a fundamental role in shaping the objectives and outcomes of all programs funded under the settlement program and resettlement assistant program. So as an applicant seeking funding for your project, it is essential to understand that these principles and also incorporate them into the various stages of your project's life cycle, ensuring that you're including the design, the implementation, and the evaluation. So the guiding principles encompass a set of values and ideals that guides the Canadian immigration and settlement framework. They ensure that the programs funded by the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada align with the government's vision and goals, which Lisa spoke about earlier. So these principles include concentrating on, sever uh, on serving clients who are at risk, underserved, or encountering challenges. So when we talk about the client-centered approach, what that means is that the projects should place the needs and preferences of immigrants, migrants, and refugees at the forefront. This approach ensures that the services and supports provided are customized to address the specific circumstances and challenges that immigrants, migrants, and refugees face. So by doing so, it makes the journey to integrate into Canadian society more effective and meaningful. So when we talk about outcome-driven, it means that we base our actions and decisions on solid evidence. This approach ensures that we're con um, consistently working towards achieving the best possible result for the clients in which that you're serving, whether it's in the short term or whether it's in the long term. So our commitment to evidence-based practices ensures that we make a real and lasting impact on the lives of those we are um, looking to serve. The next area is responsive to need. So this means that they're not only tailored to meet the individual needs of the clients, but you're also looking to um, making sure that it's aligned with the larger societal objective uh, of, of effectively integrating immigrants and refugees. So by doing so, you are contributing to the realization of the shared vision for settlement and integration. So you must ensure that you are dedicated to ensuring that your programs serve both the immediate and long-term needs of your clients while fostering the broader goals of a welcoming and inclusive society. Lastly, the effective use of resources. That just means you're, com you're committed to running programs that are efficient and successful, meaning fostering collaborations, sharing resources, and reaching out to the support of the community, including volunteers and other local businesses. So when you submit your application to IRCC, it will be assessed against the guiding principles to ensure that your project um, aligns with the overarching goals and values of the Canadian Immigration and Settlement uh, System. And 
it, by adhering to those principles, it not only increases your chances of securing the funding, but it also contributes to the effectiveness and success of your project in supporting immigrants, migrants, and refugees in their settlement and integration journey. So what we'll do now is we'll walk, with, uh, walk you through the various components to a proposal. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you, Keisha. So in this section, we'll take a closer look at the various components of the IRCC call for proposal. We have been using the terms proposal and grants interchangeably throughout the presentation, but they're essentially the same thing. Um, so in your sections, there will likely be about nine areas that you will need to complete in your application. But in short, these components will include uh, a brief summary of what you intend to do and how you intend to do it, an, an outline of your objectives or your goals and activities, a project work plan, which is also sometimes called a logic model. And this describes your project's timeline and available resources. An explanation of your outreach goals and how you intend to reach your target audience. Clarity about your intended outcomes and or deliverables. Um, you'll have to add statements about your organizational capacity uh, and an outline of how you intend to evaluate the effectiveness of your project and a pathway to tracking your progress to success. Your budget template will be a section where you will outline your expected revenue and expenses. Finally, there will be some mandatory documents that you must submit with your application. Next slide. So the summary section of your proposal will ask for general information about yourself or your organization. You will have an opportunity to write about your organizational structure, such as the number of staff you have and the information about your board of directors. You will have to provide a brief history of your organization, including, including significant milestones or achievements. You will also need to include what, your, what you want to speak to your organization's vision and mandate. An organizational vision describes in one or two brief sentences the larger overreaching goal that you might be trying to achieve. For example, to create sustainable economic opportunity for every immigrant, migrant, and refugee in Ontario. The mission is more targeted goal that you will be trying to meet, which feeds into the vision. For example, to create self, safe, welcoming spaces for immigrants, migrants, and refugees to feel supported as they navigate workforces in Ontario. The organizational mandate will describe the way in which you attain your mission. For example, how your organization does the work, such as the kind of services and programs that you design, and offer to your target audience. Finally, your summary will speak briefly to other key contributors that are aligned with your, or you collaborate with, as well as your specific community and other stakeholders who may be a part of your project. Next slide, please. In as the section for describing your project's goals and activities, this is where you'll have an opportunity to tell your story. Here you can expand on some of the following information. So what will take place during your program or project? What are your key activities? When will your project take place and for how long? Who will carry out the activities and how will it happen? Who will benefit from your project and what community will you serve? How will you reach them? Why are you or your organization best suited to carry out these activities? What skills and experience do you have? What is the change or the impact that you expect to make? And what are your intended key outcomes? How does your project align with your organizational mission, vision, and mandate? And how will you know if your project is successful? How do you plan to measure success and collect data? So the work plan and logic model. Uh, some proposals will require that you submit a detailed work plan. In most cases though, the work plan template will be provided by the funder. You would just have to fill it in. 
But here you will be expected to clearly lay out your intended activities and align them with a proposed time frame, expected outcomes, the type of resources that you need, and a list of who will take responsibility for which tasks. A project work plan is very similar to a logic model, it's, which is a planning, uh, implementing, and evaluation tool used as a sort of a visual illustration of a program's resources, activities, and expected outcomes. The logic model is also used to draw the relationships between the different components of your proposal. And the work plans, um, for the, in my experience, the work plans can take a very long time to finalize. So give yourself plenty of time to complete this exercise and include as much detail as possible. A good strategy to have is to do your work plan last so that once you've got all your content and your project idea, you can make sure that your plan aligns accurately with the project goals, activities, and the outcomes that you speak of throughout your application. Such great information, Lisa, thank you. All right, so I wanna test your knowledge again. Let's see where we are so far. Once again, I'll give you about 30 seconds and answer in Slido or the chat if you are able. First question is, what is the primary purpose of setting clear goals in grant or proposal writing? Your options are A, to make the application more visually appealing, B, to impress the grant writers, uh, reviewers, sorry, C, to demonstrate the expected outcome and impact of the project, or D, to increase the word count in the proposal. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of smart people on this call. Let's see, everyone, well, like, there's like one person that, <laughs> that didn't answer correctly, but C, to demonstrate the expected outcomes and impact of the project. That's so great, guys. So let's touch on this a little bit. It is so important to set clear goals in the grant proposal um, as we'll show the grant reviewers that you intend what you intend to achieve with the grant funds. Also, those what those funds will be used for and the potential positive impact of the project. All right, question two. When writing about the services that your organization provides, it's important to A, keep the description brief to save space for other sections, B, use complex jargon to sound more professional, C, clearly outline the services and their relevance to the grant project, or D, avoid mentioning services altogether. Oh my God, amazing. So C, clearly outline the services uh, and their relevance to the grant project was the answer. You all picked that. <laughs> so it is essential to clearly outline what the services, what services you offer and explain how they are directly relevant to the grant project. In this situation, less is not more. More and more is absolutely better. Question three. So later on in uh, the presentation, we will be touching on SMART goals. Um, but I would like to see where everyone is right now on, about, uh, about what you know about SMART goals so far. So. Third question is, in grant writing, which of the following best describes the term SMART goal? A, goals that are tricky to understand. B, goals that are lengthy in detail. C, goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Or D, goals that are secretive, mysterious, ambiguous, random, and time consuming. Good job, everyone. Yep, the answer is C. Goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So there's a little hint here. The, ac the SMART goal is actually the acronym. So S is for specific, M is for measurable, A for achievable, R for relevant, and T for time bound. Next slide, please. Okay, so how do we, how do we make sure that the proposal is effective and reaching the right people? This all relates to outreach. You wanna pay attention to who your target audience is and why they are important for your project. What's also important is your messaging and how to grab their attention and inform them of your, goal, of your goals and benefits. You'll also need to figure out what type of method and communication you'll use like uh, social media, community events, and so on. Communication is key. So providing a timeline of how you will conduct research, I mean, sorry, outreach activities is very important. Uh, you will also need your target audience to know how much everything will cost in detail by adding a budget slide. Next slide, please. Okay, so the outcome of uh, the outcome section is the of your proposal tells us about your specific intended outcome using metrics. So how do we achieve this? 
You will need to be clear on the specific outcome you aim to achieve. They need to be measurable and you will have to explain the indicators you're using to measure the, for, uh, measure the success. Now, for example, that's like surveys, uh, data collection, website analytics, and other quantifiable uh, data points, and they must be tied to your project's objective. You'll have to explain how the project will impact the target audience. For example, will it improve their lives, provide valuable services, or meet their needs for uh, meet their needs more effectively? This will all need to be explained while keeping in mind if you're going to be using the long term outcome or versus short term outcome. And the difference between the two are that the short, short term outcome might be for immediate changes and the long term might reflect broader and lasting impacts. Next slide, please. All right, with all the information you just received, let's test your knowledge again. By now, you know the drill, I'll give you about, I'll give you about uh, 30 seconds to answer. And that's in the chat or Slido. Perfect. All right, question one. In grant writing, the term outcome refers to A, the activities you plan to carry out, B, the anticipated results and changes you expect to achieve through your project, C, the organization you'll be partnering with, or D, the timeline for completing your project. Okay, I am absolutely impressed at the group that we have today. Great job, guys. The answer is B, the anticipated results and changes you expect to achieve through your project. So you have to remember that these have to be specific and measurable. All right, question two. Effective outreach and grants involves A, sending out many applications as, as possible to increase your chances of winning the grant. B, promoting your organization on social media, but not making any personal connections. C, building relationship with potential funders and engaging the community. And D, focusing solely on the grant application without external communication. Amazing. Okay, like everyone picked, it is C, building relationships with potential funders and engaging in the community. You guys are very smart. So remember with that, um, there's so many avenues to building um, engagement in the community, community events, social media. This will allow you to demonstrate a genuine commitment to the project goals. All right, question three. When describing project activities and grant proposals, you should a, keep them vague to allow for flexibility. B, use complex technical language to impress the reviewers. C, provide a clear and detailed plan of action, including who, what, when, and how. And D, avoid discussing activities as it's not relevant in the grant writing. All right, so they, they answered everything correctly. So yeah, number C, I'm sorry, C, to provide a clear and detailed plan of action to include, uh, including who, what, when, and how. So like I mentioned before, communication is key. Over communicating to drive your point across in this instance will forever work in your favor. Next slide, please. Thanks so much, Simona. I'm going to dive into capa the capacity section, um, which is another critical aspect of your proposal. So this is where you will provide in-depth information about your team, uh, the partners, those who you're collaborating with, and other project supporters. So this section is all about demonstrating your ability to effectively carry out the planned activities and meet your project's goals. So here are some key points to consider as you present your capacity. So you'll want to think about the skills and expertise. So highlight your skill set and, uh, and the collective skills within your team. Showcase past experiences and results that demonstrate your, ca your capability to successfully execute the proposed project. Another great thing is to think about your past success stories. This is an opportunity for you to brag. Share some concrete example of your organization's or team's growth and, best, uh, and past successes, because these stories should reflect the impact that you've made in the past, right? Um, another key area is partner contributions. So explain the role that your partners will play in the project. This includes detailing any financial contributions, any in-kind support, or voluntary assistance that they'll provide. So when mentioning in-kind support, um, 
be sure to quantify it with a numerical or monetary value. Uh, for example, you can specify that your project will benefit from 25 hours of volunteer support for a fundraising event or um, event planning. Or you can say in-kind professional services, such as website main maintenance with an estimated value of, of $1,500. When I say the word in-kind or in-kind um, value or support, what that means, it refers to donations or provision of goods or services other than cash contributions, okay? And uh, we can get into more detail about that later. Um, you'll also want to include letters of support. So don't hesitate to request letters of support um, from your partners. Include them in your proposal if applicable. These letters should outline your historical working relationship and confirm your partner's commitment um, to the project. So by providing comprehensive details and testimonials about your capacity and that of your collaborators, then you'll strengthen your proposal and build trust in your ability to successfully carry out um, the project. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Awesome. The evaluation section is also like the who, what, how, and why section. So you'll need to describe such things as what data or information you intend to collect and how does it connect to the determin uh, to determining determining, sorry, if you have met the project's outcome. Um, what type of resources or tools will be used to measure your impact? For example, are you going to have a pre-survey, post questionnaires, focus groups, testimonials, or uh, social media engagement? How frequently you will use the measuring tools throughout the course of the project? And you can ask yourself, do you need to gather data with specific timelines? If so, how will you achieve that? Also, you'll need to communicate your findings and who it will be shared with. For example, will you provide a final research report that will be posted on your website? These are the things that the target audience will be looking for. Next slide. Okay, so thank you. So uh, the budget section. A well-structured budget is a critical component of a successful grant application. Uh, first and foremost, um, it's very important that you review the guidelines in advance to make sure that you know what the eligible and ineligible expenses are. The key components of a budget is your anticipated outcome, which includes the money from other sources, your expected expenses or expenditures, and any in-kind contributions. Uh, the budget should be balanced, meaning that the income and expenses are the same. You should be prepared to provide a detailed narrative or justification for each line item in your budget, explaining why each cost is necessary for the project and how it aligns to attaining your goals. Most funders will provide a budget template that's tailored to their own requirements. Uh, so you likely won't have to worry about creating your own budget template. Um, just the details that will go within it. We have provided this sample budget for funding from the Fictionary Campbell Family Foundation as an example of how you may present your project expenditures and anticipated income. Uh, again, budget templates do vary from application to application, but the key thing to remember is that before submitting to the funder, your budget must be balanced meaning again, no anticipated surplus and no anticipated deficit by the end of your project. Um, in this sample, you'll see various categories of eligible project expenditures, such as staff salaries, money to pay consultants and general project expenses. We've included some additional information to show the calculation details um, where necessary. Uh, for a multi-year project. So you'll see calculations um, and written details that are a very important part of the budget narrative, actually. Um, take your time in preparing your narrative. Funders will be paying attention to assess whether or not any preparation or research was involved in ensuring that your budget is feasible. Um, this budget here has a column for your requested amounts from the funder and a column to show potential funding from other sources. 
enter all relevant information. But do remember that it's okay to estimate as long as it's realistic and makes sense. Again, of course, if you have accurate and deep down to the cent of, of your expenses and you know exactly how much it's going to cost, please enter the details there. So again, the sum of your revenue sources must equal the sum of your expenses. In this sample, you will see that the subtotals of requested amounts from the Campbell Family Foundation plus the anticipated amounts from other funding sources total $100,000 as well as the expenses total $100,000. Next slide. Before we discuss the mandatory documents that need to be included in your, with your proposal, I just wanna give you an overview of some potential criteria and scoring methods that funding committees may use to assess your application. Keep in mind that the criteria and scoring method may vary from application to application, um, Keisha spoke earlier about the core principles of the IRCC proposal. A favorable assessment will be based on how well you can express how you will meet these principles. This example here was taken from a, the 2019 IRCC assessment criteria and was based on the following scoring method. So a client-centered approach was worth 15% of the overall score. This score is based on what strategy you use to engage your target audience. If the programming is client informed and does it target specific client needs? Also, have you been able to demonstrate a level of organizational capacity and experience? An outcomes driven approach is the section that's worth the most, 40%. For this criteria, they were looking at whether or not the project activities were geared towards expected outcomes and aligned with one or more of the IRCC's outcomes as identified in their core principles and whether or not each project outcome is measurable. Um, response to need, um, this is worth 20% uh, or was at least in 2029. But this looks at whether the need for the project is clearly stated and supported by recent evidence or proof that the problem or issue exists and needs to be addressed. This scoring area is also concerned with whether or not there are feasible project goals with clear connection to at least one base service or a customized service. Um, and with uh, effective use of resources, were 25%, here the IRC was looking at how well community assets were being leveraged to avoid duplication. For example, does your project include any aligned partners? Um, who are they? How well they do, like how well will they contribute to the work that you are doing and the goals that you're trying to achieve? Um, there was also, they're also looking to see if your proposed budget was balanced. <laughs> and that all costs and revenues related to the project have been itemized and explained or justified. Uh, next slide. Hey, the funding guidelines will indicate a list of mandatory documents that you must attach to your application. So different mandatory documents are required based on the applicant type that, um, that you're using. So there's three applicant types, public institutions, non-federal levels of government, and individuals. So for organizations that will, uh, you will be required to submit your most recent annual report and your financial statements for the last two years, preferably audited statements. However, if your organization is relatively new and does not have the two recent years of financial statements, you'll have an opportunity to, uh, opportunity to provide an explanation that will be considered by the IRCC. You will also have to provide proof that your organization is registered nonprofit or charity and information about your board of directors. Individual applicants must be asked, uh, maybe asked for a resume and proof of citizenship. Additionally, some applications might require supporting materials like audiovisual content, 
images, video footage, or comparative notes from service providers. In most cases, you can submit optional letters of support from financial partners who will be contributing money or other resources towards your proposed project. Be sure that you pay attention to the required document file format. For example, some applications will only allow PDF files to be uploaded into portals, so be prepared to convert your files if necessary. It is really important to note that applications missing mandatory documents will be considered incomplete and will not be evaluated. The IRCC will not follow up on to obtain missing information. Next slide, please. So we'll just jump right back into testing your knowledge. Okay, so first question. In grant writing, the term capacity refers to A, the physical space where the project will be carried out, B, the ability of the organization to effectively plan and execute the proposed project. C, the duration of the project. Or D, the number of staff members involved in the project. Okay, so question two, the evaluation section of a grant proposal, proposal typically inc includes A, a list of potential grant reviewers. B, a detailed budget breakdown. C, a plan for assessing the project progress and impact, or D, information about the project's goals and services. And your third question is, when developing a project budget for grant proposals, it is essential to A, overestimate all costs to ensure financial security, B, only include expenses related to salaries and equipment, C, provide a realistic and detailed breakdown of all anticipated costs and income sources, or D, leave the budget blank as it can be filled out later. Okay, let me get to these answers. So question one, the answer was, I mean, the proposed project. It is really important as it builds your credibility. Okay, and question two, let me see where the answers are here. Wow, all right, awesome. So yes, the answer is C, a plan for assessing the project's uh, projects progress and impact. Good job, guys, everybody picked C. I'm very impressed right now. All right, and the third question, when developing a project budget for grant proposal is just essential to, come on, again, everyone pick C. Good job, guys. Provide a realistic and detailed breakdown of all anticipated costs and income sources. So it is crucial to provide a realistic and detailed breakdown of all anticipated costs and income and income sources because it builds trust and it demonstrates feasibility. Next slide, please. Great job, guys. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so here we go. Writing a winning proposal. A winning proposal that is effective and efficient involves incorporating multiple writing strategies. In general, persuasive writing and storytelling are the most effective writing tools. So with regard to storytelling, I'm, I'm gonna go over a few tips. Once you've settled on a project idea that you'll want you'll want to keep your story centered around a main character or a group of people. For example, if your proposal is seeking funding for capacity building, speak about your staff needs and what your organization requires to develop its capacity. Or you can talk about a particular target audience, who you plan to create programming for and what is the specific demographic. You'll want to focus on experience, sort of the foundation of your story, like the problem or the gap or opportunity that you that has created your rationale in the first place. Specifically, what is your why or your reason for the project? In other words, like what is the conflict or the controversy perhaps that you intend to challenge or address? Um, it's also important to make sure to incorporate whatever research exists already to indicate the need. Uh, we've discussed that a little bit already. And why does this need to happen now? 
why should we care? What is the proximity or the impact to your target group? And where is your audience? Like, where will you find them and how? Um, in, a, in your winning story, you'll want to use qualitative info, um, information that can come from a needs assessment, perhaps you prepared or somebody else prepared, studies, statistics, um, academic research, literature, anything to prove the relevance and why your issue needs to be funded. Um, and is your idea one that is relatable to most people? Uh, when using this type of information, um, always be sure to use your references and for any sources that you have. It, include your references for any sources that you've used. Um, other strategies to consider um, when writing the winning proposal or what would be most impactful for funders to know is the timeline. So meaning that the timeline of the issue. So is this a current issue? Is it an older issue? Is it something that may happen in the future that you want to or would like to prevent or decrease? Um, include timelines that will also link to the proximity and the relevance of your story. Um, and of course, Simona mentioned visuals as physical evidence. So images, videos, they're very impactful and they're memorable for funders. Even considering hiring a professional um, photographer or videographer to capture images and video that will enhance your visual impact. Words are great, pictures are better. Next slide. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into the proposal strategy. So in the grand scheme of things, having a well-defined proposal strategy, a blueprint for planning, writing and enhancing your proposal, that can truly make the difference to your proposal. So it starts with that initial spark, that innovative program or project idea that you have. Uh, perhaps it's an, it's an ambition to expand your work that you already have going. So you'll want to be crystal clear about the who. That is who your program will serve and dive into the specifics of that. Um, also think about where and when this project unfolds becomes um, crucial, like forming the backdrop of your proposal. Who's on your project team? Well, that's a question that you'll need to address when uh, when you're building this out. And as Lisa mentioned before, too, research will be your trusted ally as you provide the a justification for your project or program's necessity. This is where you're going to present the why, right? So why is this important? Why are you doing this? Next, all about outlining how your project will bring about meaningful impact or meaningful train, uh, ch uh, change. Um, this is where you're going to get down to the nitty gritty of how it, it will also be executed. Um, last but not least, you'll be asked to dive into the details of your proposed budget. Again, accounting for the uh, resources required to turn your vision into reality. This comprehensive strategy will set you on the path to crafting a compelling proposal that really stands out. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so when it comes to proposal writing, the use of SMART goals serves as a pivotal tool. It's not, it's, it's sorry, it's all about creating a well-defined and compelling proposal that not only showcases a deep comprehension of the project's objectives and the strategies and expected outcomes, but also it provides a roadmap for how the funds will be used, okay? So the SMART goal method offers several advantages in grant proposal writing. It encourages clarity and precision, making your goals specific, which leaves no room for ambiguity. So the clarity is crucial in grant writing as it precisely defines what you aim to achieve with the grant funds. What is it that you want to gain from this? What is your outcome? Okay. Second, it emphasizes measurable. So by establishing concrete criteria for tracking progress and success, the grantors appreciate the assurance that their funds are being used effectively and produce measurable results, right? Again, it has to be outcome-based. So the uh, SMART goals must be easy to achieve. They must be realistic and attainable with the available resources, time, and capacity, okay? So this demonstrates to the grantors that you possess a practical and feasible plan, a realistic goal, 
can adversely impact your grant application. And the fourth realistic uh, is key, um, which is um, SMART goals should align with your organization's mission and objectives, as well as the purpose of the grant. So the grantors seek assurance that their investment will have a meaningful impact and coherent um, impact within your area of work. The last part is time bound. So the asp that aspect is vital. SMART goals set specific timeframes or deadlines for goal achievement. In grant writing, this component is essential for illustrating when and how the grant funds will be put to use. So in summary, incorporating SMART goals into your proposal enhances transparency, credibility, making your grant application more compelling, practical and effective throughout the entire grant life cycle. So for the follow-up, we will continue uh, with our SMART goals from this previous um, present from this presentation, but it will also be an opportunity for Q&A. So that will take place on November the 16th uh, from 12 to 1. Okay, so if you haven't signed up for that one, that's where we'll get into the real nitty gritty of really understanding the SMART goals and how that applies. And then we'll also have an opportunity for for question and answers as well. Thank you so much, Keisha, Simona, and Lisa for today and all the tools and resources you have developed. Thank you for having us. Well, I hope we will see everyone uh, that participated today in the next session. Thank you all. Thank you.